Welcome back to another TikToks video. In this video, I'll be showing you Tailscale scale VPN and how you can implement it into your home network and how you can utilize it with your self hosting deployments and stuff like that. So in this video, I'm going to give you an overview of how Tailscale scale works. And then I'm going to show you how you can deploy it and utilize it as well. We'll deploy the agents and we'll get everything set up so you can pretty much watch this video. By the end of it, you can have Tailscale scale deployed in your home deployment or however you're going to use it. Uh, and then you should be good as well. So let's just get an overview on how Tailscale scale works. Now, if you're familiar with any other sort of VPN, you've got a VPN server, right? And then you've got the clients that connect to it, right? So let's say, for example, I've made videos on WireGuard before, right? So if I wanted to deploy a WireGuard VPN that I'm going to self host and I'm going to manage everything, I look after the server and then anyone that wants to connect to it will deploy a WireGuard client on their phone or laptop and then they would connect to my server and then everything's managed but I'm looking after the server right well if you look at my screen here so the way Tailscale is working is that they will have what they call their coordination server that's sitting at the back and that's doing all the management for us we are not looking after that back end server right so when you if you've ever deployed WireGuard before you're managing that server in this case you're not worrying about that now that's where Tailscale is looking after that and then what we're doing is we're just installing clients on our machines on our phones on our servers uh, on my MacBook whatever you enable it you turn it on and as long as everything's connected to the back-end coordination server I can talk to my server I can talk to my phone uh, I can connect to it I can SSH to it and I'll show you all of this without me having to manage and worry about that backend server. So why would you want to use it? It's just like any other VPN. Why would you want to use any other VPN? Now, the, the key use case is if you need to connect to your servers or any other devices that you have and you're not on your home network, how do you do that, right? And that's why you would implement a VPN. But sometimes the overhead and the management of a VPN can be a bit cumbersome, uh, especially if you don't have the server capabilities to have it up all the time right and that's why you would use something like tail scale they're managing that back end you just have to have the client installed on your machines and then it doesn't matter where you are you turn your tail scale vpn on and as long as all your other devices have the tail scale vpn on as well you can connect to all of them and i'll show you this right so coming over to the tail scale ui so i've logged in but i'll walk you through the process in a second i just want to show you how this all works is that i've got all my machines here this is the machines tab and you can see I have added four machines to my Tailscale. And the way this works is that we're just deploying the Tailscale client onto the machine. You log in with it, it connects to your Tailscale account, it pops up here, and you're good. So you can see that I have four devices at the moment. I have my Electron Cloud, which is one of my main servers. I have my iPhone connected to it. I have my MacBook and I have my NAS. Now here's the use case. I'm away from home, right? And if I want to interact with any of these, normally I wouldn't be able to, right? But since I'm using Tailscale, I've got these addresses that I can use and I can just interact with them like they were a local IP address. Now just hence like a VPN. Again, if you're familiar with the VPN concept, it's the same thing here. So let's say, for example, I wanted to interact with my server, my Electron-Cloud server. And all I have to do is make sure that my Tailscale client is working. So let's just come up to the top here and let's see, uh, Tailscale, there we go. We can see that I am connected. So that should mean I should be able to interact with any of these machines. So I've just opened up a terminal here and let me just show you for an example. Let's go ping Electron-Cloud and hit enter. There we go. So you can see that we are hitting that Tailscale IP address there and we're able to interact with it. Now, ju just so I can show you that this is actually working, I'm going to turn it off. There we go. I'm no longer connected to the Tailscale VPN. Let's try that again. There we go. That domain name doesn't actually mean anything unless I have my VPN on for Tailscale. Let's turn that back on. There we go. So we connected again. And now let's try that again. And you can see I can ping it. But not only can I ping it, I can interact with it like as if I was on my network. So SSH TikToks at Electron hyphen cloud. And I've got the SSH keys already configured, right? It's the same thing. It's just my machine interacting with it over the tail scale VPN. And I've connected to it. So even if I'm away from home, this works. And since my Electron cloud is also on the tail scale network, I should be able to ping Nebula, which is my NAS. And there we go. You can see it, that's also connected. So we've got this whole network configured and they can all talk to each other using that tail scale client. So I think you get the concept of how it's working. So let's actually go through the deployment method of actually getting all of this set up. So it's actually quite simple. So all you need to do, a link will be in the description, is go to tail scale, log in and create an account, right? And then all you're wanting to do is come into this machines tab 
and we're just going to want to add a device. So what I'm actually going to do, I have a sandbox server that I interact with quite a lot. So I'm actually going to add that to my tail scale environment. So let's go add device. And you can see here, you've got a range of devices you can add. You've got Linux, Windows, Mac OS, iPhone, Android, and Synology. And that's what uh, Nebula is. It's using uh, the Synology deployment of Tailscale. So I'm going to be deploying on this on my Linux server. So let's copy this. And all I've got to do is copy this command. So we can copy this command. And now I'm going to go to my sandbox server and we're going to deploy this and we'll go through the whole deployment process. So let's connect to my sandbox server now. So let's do SSH tech docs at uh, sandbox.home. There we go. So I've connected to my Electron Sandbox now. So let's clear the screen up a bit. Now we can deploy that command. So what this command is doing is actually pulling the install script from Tailscale uh, and it's going to run that. So it's just a shell script. So if we hit enter, it will start to run through the process. So now it's asking for my sudo password. So put this in. So we're going to hit enter here. And now it's going to pull that command and now it's running it. And there we go. So now we can see that our tail scale has been set up and it says here at the bottom to run it, all we need to do is do sudo tail scale up. So let's run that now. So sudo tail scale up and we'll hit enter. And now it's saying, hey, to authenticate with tail scale and make sure that, you know, we're connecting to the right account. All we've got to do is copy this and we'll paste it into a browser. So we come over to my browser again. We'll paste that in and now I'm going to log in. So I'm just going to quickly do that. And now it is signing in and we'll see how this goes. Cool. So now it's saying you're about to connect a device to Electron Sandbox um, and we are going to connect. So let's hit connect. And there we go. So it says login successful. My device Electron Sandbox is now logged into Tailnet and now I should be able to use it. So if we come back to our machines here, we should see it now. There we go. So Electron Sandbox. So now all of this should be able to be interacted as if it was on the local network, like any other VPN. So coming back over to our sandbox server, we can actually test this now. So we should be able to ping um, Nebula, right? Which is an ass. There we go, it can. I should now also be able to connect to that rather than doing the sandbox.home is how I connected to it last time. We should be able to do Electron hyphen sandbox. Now it's a new host, so we have to go yes. And there we go. We've connected to it. Tailscale acting as a VPN, yes, is a major component, but there's so many other additional features that it has. Now, if you've got multiple users you want to manage uh, that can have access to things, you can invite them to it. Uh, what you can also do is have access control lists. So I could say, hey, look, you know, I can mark certain servers uh, with a certain tag, and then you can go, okay, only these certain people can access these tag, like these servers based off the tags. And uh, there's so much control that you can have especially if you're even in a small business or a big business you can implement something like this and then have all of that fine grain control so people can only access what they need to right and to show you how fine grain the access controls are you can see it here so you've got an acl file here that you can set up and change and configure how the certain groups can interact with the specific servers and groups that you have i know that there's probably a bit of an elephant in the room is you don't control the control server, right? It's uh, it's run by Tailscale, managed by Tailscale, and that might be a deal breaker. Um, and that's fair. A lot of people, especially when they're self-hosting, want to be in control of all of their devices and all of their services. But if that is a deal breaker, then have a look at Headscale. It's an open source self-hosted implementation of Tailscale control server, as it says here. So, and then everything's managed by you. You control it, you run it. It's just everything I was showing you before is now managed by Headscale instead. Now, I, I, I want to make a video on this. I really do. It's just that their Docker container deployment of Headscale is community driven. And in my view, the documentation and the deployment is all over the place and it's not easy to understand. So if I'm going to make a video on it, I want it to be easy to understand. So I'm probably going to have a work. I'm probably going to work on it and try to get the Docker uh, container deployment as well as the documentation a lot more cleaner. And then I'll make a video on how you can get Headscale deployed as well. So that's Tailscale. So who is it for and should you use it? So that's a big question, right? Like a Tailscale control server being managed not by you, like, and it's being managed by the Tailscale team, and that's no concern to you, then it's all for you. I would, I would highly suggest it. it. It's great. It makes VPN access and everything like that so much easier, and you've got all the ACL and the user access that you have full control of, and it just makes things so much easier. Install a client, log in, away you go. Um, 
yeah I, I just think if you don't have a solid server that you can have up t all the time 24 7 uh and managing a vpn server then tail scale is definitely a way to go i highly recommend looking into it anyways but that's the video any questions uh youtube comments or jump to the discord and have a conversation it would be awesome uh to have a conversation around this and help what your thoughts are um also if you're keen to help me get head scale deployed uh via docker container that would be great now the binary install looks easy but i want to do it via docker because i just like docker containers uh but yeah thank you so much for all the support i think we're nearly at ten thousand. we might be at ten thousand by the time you're watching this uh but thank you for all the support it's been awesome youtube comments discord channel jump in there uh it'll be awesome to talk to all of you thank you so much have a good one and i'll see you in the next video bye bye